Hey, welcome back. I've got a mixed episode of uh, new footage, old footage, as we try to work our way a little closer to current. Uh, finishing touches on the front of the plane, the bottom of the plane. We're gonna have to tear this sucker down as I get it ready to prime and rivet back together. Stay tuned. That wasn't too bad. All right, I got these fit in place and I have a sort of a doubler. Uh, the next steps are to again, trial fit our gear weldments and then put four big bolts through the front of this. But it's not quite that easy. These bolts have to be placed exactly and we gotta make sure they have proper edge distance on everything they're going through, including these steel weldments. I think I'm ready to drill the four bolts that go here. I need a stronger clamp. I have all this clamp together back here. I don't know how necessary that was, but it gives me some peace of mind knowing that everything fits before I make things permanent up front. First thing I'm gonna do, mark out where these bolts go. Then we gotta tread lightly because I want to ensure that when I poke these holes all the way through, I've got enough edge distance on this bottom part. So even with my carefully measured holes, <laughs> I'm a little trepidatious about just drilling in there. And I, I think that's for good reason. I took some time to transfer the lines um, as carefully as I could down below to the bracket. And this is where they would have wound up on this inner line here. Um, and that's too close to the edge, uh, far too close. So I think what needs to happen here is to push these bolts a little closer inboard. That'll still allow proper edge distance on the aluminum, but guarantee proper edge distance on the steel down below. I'm gonna push them in about an eighth of an inch, uh, which will leave three eighths of an inch here on the steel and three eighths of an inch here on the aluminum. With these being 3 16 inch roughly holes, um, that's exactly what we need. Let's make some holes. So this footage is older, but it's a, it's a part that I definitely wanted to include in my videos. Uh, as you can see, this is back when my father was still here. Um, but drilling these holes uh, is a huge part of tying in the lower long rounds, tying the firewall into the main structure. It's incredibly important to make sure you have edge distance on all those. I know I've mentioned it before, but the last thing you want to do is plop those holes through and find out that on the weldment underneath, you don't have the space required. All right, the lower long rounds are now tied into the firewall and the engine mounts. That thing is getting stiff up front. To further stiffen it, we're gonna add some gussets. These need some work, so like usual, the first thing we're gonna have to do is mark them up and take them over to the bandsaw, drill press, a little bit of everything.
Hey, just a quick thank you uh, to everybody who has supported the channel, who's watching, who's commenting. Um, a, a very heartfelt and special thank you uh, to an individual who's used my builder number to um, use the referral program through Vans. You know who you are. Thank you so much for doing that. And if you're not buying a plane and you don't have that opportunity, not a problem. You can easily support the channel by liking, sharing, subscribing, and shooting me a comment telling me what you think. All right, just like before, we're looking to bend this about a sixteenth of an inch, even less if I remember correctly. I think that's plenty. Because the part will no longer lay flat after that first bend, I'm going to have to make a homebrew bending break for the second bend. This ledge here needs to come down just a bit in order to get proper edge distance on this row of rivets that'll be here. I think I need about a sixteenth of an inch. All right, it's been adjusted. The good news is I still have plenty of edge distance on this first rivet. I could go up realistically another quarter of an inch and be fine. Now, I don't need nearly that much, but that was one of my concerns. Let's take a look at the fit. Let's see if it works. <clears throat> I got it off the plane. I think I got all the edge distance I need. I might squeeze out just another sixteenth of an inch to be sure, uh, but I'm pretty happy with it. So. Next steps, create one more mirrored version and then start drilling these onto the plane. Uh, left to right, the, the cuts are exactly the same. It's just the bends that we're going to have to change. So I'm going to make all the same marks, drill the holes, and at that point, uh, bending up becomes down, down becomes up. Adjustments are the name of the game here. Uh, the part number begins with a six. To me, that automatically means it's going to take some fine tuning. The instructions also note uh, that it's going to take some fine tuning and indeed it does. I've grown a little tired of walking back and forth. So I just simply measured this one. Uh, I know what my edge distance needs to be. And I put a line here on where the bracket needs to go. And if we look, I am just about there. Um, to be honest, I could use about another 30 second and there's really no reason to, to skimp on that. So I'll take a little more off. I'll do a double check of this side using the same uh, measurements and the same technique. And then with that, I think we can drill them into place. Well, I snapped the bit of my stubby right angle drill, uh, the number 30, which is a bummer, it's my only one, but I think I can get this finished up by peeling back the skin for the most part. Um, we'll give it a try. Definitely have to order a new one of those. It's a lot of work, uh, that's for sure, but I can't get too bogged down, like I said. I'm gonna keep moving forward. Um, so these are the forward bulkheads. They're gonna get nestled in here 
notched in around the long rods, and there's a few pieces of adjustment we got to do to make sure they fit before we start drilling them in. So it fits pretty good, uh, but I can tell just by looking at my holes that down here where we get some curvature to this flange, like always, it's causing a bend in the other direction, 90 degrees to that curve. Um, so it needs a little bit of fluting. We'll go ahead and handle that. Then we also need to make sure that the forward face of this is perpendicular to our skin here and it's not it's tilted slightly backward so we'll grab our seamers and we'll bend that flange closer to a 90 at the same time i think with those two adjustments this one's perfect then we'll move to the other one we'll keep marching forward some holes for rudder cables and it says to attach some nut plates I of course I'm gonna to wait to do that until after I prime however again we're marching so far forward that I feel like I'm gonna forget some of these steps it's gonna go on a master list of things I don't want to forget as I'm riveting all this together the last step on these is honestly a little daunting uh, it's to drill them to the longer on but there's not a lot of room where I think we maintain edge distance on both the long run and the flange. So I'm going to do some careful measuring, center punch it, and then pop those holes. So now we have some shims or spacers to make as well as some brackets to make. Uh, all of this is utilized for mounting of the fuel tank attach bracket um, and that will go on the outside of the fuselage and attach the fuel tank to the fuselage. We've got two thicknesses of the same basic shim uh, so we'll be making four total but two of each thickness and then on this bracket something a little different I'm noticing that these 45 degree angles originate not from the base of the angle aluminum stock but from the top of the flange so something to keep in mind there i'm going to start marking these things up um, and fabricating them <laughs> All right, so as I construct this bracket, it's important to note uh, they give what looks like an overall dimension. It's not. We actually have to add three dimensions um, to account for the taper outward, the angle outward on uh, the top and bottom legs of this bracket. So uh, our total dimension, 4 and 11 sixteenths. I'm going to start by cutting that, then we'll mark out our first angle cuts. Uh, 
Uh, so I got the first angle cut, um, and I can clean it up a little bit with a file, but it's, it's very, very close. The second one uh, is 1 32nd off of this, and I'm, I'm not going to try to cut that on a bandsaw. Uh, I'm just going to file that down. So we'll file a little angle into this, clean this one up, and then on to the 45s. The 45s are a little different. Uh, one, we've already got an angle. We're adding an angle. That always gets a little confusing. The second reason is they don't originate at the vertex or the base of this. They originate an eighth of an inch up so that the angle meets uh, this leg here. So we're going to carefully mark these out and then I think really uh, going to have to rely on our gauge rather than freehand because these are kind of tough. All of these pieces are just getting a single hole in the top for now. I'm going to mark those, get them drilled, uh, and then I think we fit them. Not sure. We'll see. I'm going to figure it out and then re-record this. All of these pieces get a single hole in the top for now, and then we're going to go take them over the plane, line them up, and match drill them. If all of this seems exhausting, it is. The amount of work that goes into each part and the amount of parts in the forward fuselage is daunting. It's overwhelming. And these uh, particular parts, I wound up having to remake about three or four times. I've got a, an abundance of scrap on the shelf from misdrilled holes, improperly cut lengths. I just couldn't seem to get them right. So I got one good side, one bad side. Uh, the first side I did, the holes started to drift and they drifted off my center line towards the edge here to the point where I don't have enough edge distance on this further topmost rivet, nor do I want it, you know, out of line like that. That would just drive me crazy. So I threw this one aside and I took another stab at the right hand side. Um, the right hand side, as you can see, right down the middle, it's looking great. What did I do differently? Well, it turns out the holes that are pre-punched in this bulkhead uh, sort of lead you astray. And, and I found that there's no way to use those holes and wind up with this being perfect. Why? Well, the holes themselves have the same sort of drift outward, and this bracket, of course, butts up against the bulkhead. So what did I do? Well, I elongated those holes in this in order to line up better with the center point of this. That means that I may have to widen these three rivets here up from a 40 to a 30 so that I don't have oblong holes that they're round. Um, and the instructions note that that may be something you need to do. I'm going to go ahead and remake yet another bracket out of some angle stock. I'm glad I don't have to order these. Um, and I can make them here. I'm going to, I'm going to get to it quickly whip one up and see if I can't get this other one perfected. Now, the hard part about that, I have the bottom hole drilled the size already. So whatever I do, um, I'm going to have to take that into account. So now the idea is use this hole to chase it back through the skin in order to have it land in the correct spot for that bracket to wind up on the exterior of the airplane. Again, it's a lot of transferring holes back and forth. I hope it works. Well, these Clecos are in the way, but unfortunately these Clecos are holding everything together, so I'm not gonna pull them. I can tell it fits which makes me happy because this is an incredible amount of work for this couple brackets and shims. My goodness. This is one area where I'm really glad I refused to settle. Now, is it a little embarrassing to have four or five mistrim, misdrilled, miscut brackets on the shelf? A little bit, but it's a lot less embarrassing than having them on the plane. 
All right, I have the floor stiffeners. Now, I'm not really excited about this because it's more of those uh, formed pieces that aren't really formed. So we will hammer on these a bit to get them to fit right. Before that, I'm just trying to wrap my head around how they go. What we're gonna do is add a center line, much like other stiffeners and longer ons, we're gonna draw in our center line on here, line that up in the pre-punched holes, clamp everything together and drill it off. So centering these floor stiffeners on those holes can be a little bit difficult. Van says to have a friend up there spotting that line we drew to make sure that you're on center and then clamp it into place. That's a bold assumption. I'm building an airplane in my garage. What makes you think I have friends? However, what I was able to do is rig up a camera up there that's coming down to my cell phone on here, spotting for me uh, that line through those holes. Once I'm there, I gotta use my interesting little clamping setups here, uh, a spreader clamp behind me. I'm gonna do something a little more secure up here, but basically get these into position so I can get a couple initial Clecos drilled. Now, to make things even more difficult, this one up here, we're gonna have some edge distance issues. Uh, I have to slide this as far forward as I can because my holes coming through the firewall stiffener are awfully close to the vertex of that angle. All right, I got it clamped in there. I can see my line. Uh, I wanna do a forward Clico, hole then Clico, and then sort of an aft one to just keep this thing centered because it's really hard to get a secure clamp in there. And then once I have that, I'll feel a little more uh, relieved about the position. And I can go ahead and just punch my holes. inboard stiffener has much better clamping options. I will have to take a little bit of this one off to make room for this upright stiffener. Um, we don't want them overlapping. And I'm curious to see where that line lands because we don't have a lot of ability to move this left to right like the outboard one. Um, so hopefully it's just spot on and I can drill it as is. Let's take a look. Well, it's not on the line. Uh, it's actually a little off of it. And I know what you're thinking. You haven't taken that notch out. That's going to change things. And it is, but not in the right direction. However, uh, I went ahead and I drew some of our circles where they're landing. Um, and we still have plenty of edge distance. So I think that's fine. The edge distance is there. They're not right in the middle, but they're close to it. Um, and then we wind up being flush to both of those brackets. That's the important part because we have rivets going through this leg of the angle into those brackets. And I can't adjust it because we can't just add space there. We could add shims, but again, I don't think it's necessary. So I'm gonna go ahead and reclamp this up there uh, after taking out that corner. And then uh, from there, we'll drill this. After that, I just have two more of the same thing to do. I'm gonna rip through this and we'll see what's next. It's a little cramped in here. One of our rules of building airplanes is no sharp corners. Um, and you'll see what I mean in a moment. We're gonna make a cutout for a stiffener and we want the corner of that cutout to be started with a drill bit and have a round radius corner to it as we've done throughout the build. But it won't fit unless the corner of this is also rounded. I wish I would've known this six months ago. I would've put a slight radius on this when it was 10 times easier. Uh, but right now I got it taped off and I'm going to be able to just, I'll be able to nick the edge of this enough so that we can put a corner on the notch that we're going to cut out and they should nestle together nicely. That fits well. I just gotta clamp all this in place and drill it there.
Uh, this last one is a pain, man. And I had to get pretty creative with my clamping. Uh, but it's in, and that means that once it's drilled, I'm officially done with the joggled parts. They're my least favorite. They seriously need to do something about these hooks. This part has been some serious hard work, and my body doesn't know how to react to that, so it's just sweating profusely. Absolute sweat lodge in here. All right, that's it. It's done. At least the forward part is all the top long runs and bottom long runs and auxiliary long runs and skin stiffeners and floor stiffeners. They're all done, and while I complain a lot, it actually wasn't that bad. There was a lot of work there, but we got a lot done. There's a lot of moving pieces, or not moving pieces, up in the front of the plane. And now I've got a little bit towards the midsection of the plane to go. We've got to do some baggage ribs and baggage walls, and then after that, all of this gets broken apart. We do all of that aforementioned prep and priming, and then I get to put it together for real. If it feels like the, the really exciting stuff is always just around the corner, welcome to airplane building, because that's how I feel. Uh, it is, uh, unfortunately, about time to wrap this one up. Uh, but once again, thank you for watching. Next time we do, we have some incredible moments coming up uh, where this plane is going to get broken down, and we are going to build it back up once everything gets prepped and primed. I got to go before I use too much of my footage as B-roll. We will see you next time on Ryan Flies.